What foods build muscle after 40? Let's take a walk behind me and we'll unpack this mystery. When it comes to building and maintaining muscle over 40, there are a couple things you want to key in on. First things first, you want to get a good source of protein. You want to get foods that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. You want to get a good balance of complex and healthy carbs, and you want, definitely want to get some healthy fat in your diet. Once you hit 30 years old, your testosterone levels start to decline, and by eating some key foods, you can keep those levels elevated, and that's exactly what you need, and that's exactly what you want to do. So let's start with one of my favorites and one of the staples in the diet to maintain muscle over 40, and that would be eggs. I'd like to get organic, free-range eggs, preferably omega-3 eggs, but I didn't have a chance to get them um, this time around. I got these at the local grocery store. Always go free-range and organic no matter what. We don't want any hormones or antibiotics swimming around in our body that's toxic. It's not good for the body. I also like hard-boiled eggs too. You can get these at Costco, organic, and they make easy additions to salads or any kind of meal if you're in a rush uh, sometimes and you can just have some vegetables like raw vegetables dipped in hummus and some hard-boiled eggs for quick on-the-go food. That's gonna help benefit your muscle mass. So eggs are a good source of protein. They're also a good, a good source of lutein. They're also a great source of um, omega-3 fatty acids, which we just talked about. And omega-3 fats are specifically good because they help boost testosterone levels and they keep your um, body in a good hormonal balance at all times to help maintain muscle mass. So that's a key thing. And speaking of omega 3 is another great food you want to eat is wild-caught salmon. This too, I get at Costco. And it doesn't matter if you get it at Costco or any local grocery store. Always go with cold water fish. Salmon is really good. Wild-caught, Alaska, the waters are cold. It doesn't have a lot of mercury content in it. This is another great source of protein and omega-3 fatty acids. And might I also add, omega-3s are good for the reduction of inflammation too as we age, we tend to build up more inflammation. And that is accelerated when you have bad habits like not getting enough sleep, eating a lot of junk food, eating late at night, eating all day long, six to eight meals a day, drinking alcohol. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. Having a high amount of, of processed sugar, bad news. Processed carbs, bad news. So we don't wanna do any of those habits and we wanna include good foods like eggs and salmon in our diet. We could also get good sources of lean meat and steak and it doesn't really need to be that lean because if you have a good amount of quality cholesterol in your diet, that has been known to boost your testosterone levels. I used to love pork rinds and there was a local Mexican market that had fresh ones that were thick and they're like gooey on one side and crispy on the other and salty and they tasted absolutely amazing. I would get those by the bag. I would have a chunk about this big every single day with my meals and that was my cholesterol hit for the day. So think in terms of red meat getting your cholesterol and your protein and omega-3s from it all rolled into one. I would suggest probably getting bison or definitely wild game is going to be your best option. And then any kind of organic red meat is going to be totally fine. I just don't suggest eating it every day of the week. Maybe once or twice a week is totally fine and you're going to be okay there. Red meat is also high in deaspartic acid. Eggs are also high in deaspartic acid. That is a key nutrient to help top off those testosterone and HGH levels as well. Keep that in mind. And shockingly, I believe it's nectarines are also high in deaspartic acid. So if you want to throw those in your diet, be my guest. Organic extra virgin olive oil, once again, for the win. This has also been known to help boost testosterone levels. You can drizzle it on your salads. You can drizzle it on steamed vegetables. You can literally just put it in a tablespoon and eat it with your meal if you want to get that hardcore. So this is also a good thing to have. Another thing I would suggest is cruciferous vegetables. I have some pre-made broccoli. It's gonna disappear in about, after I get done with this video, because I'm gonna eat dinner. There's your broccoli right there. It's very colorful, it's very good for you. I also get this diced organic cauliflower. And also cabbage and sauerkraut, and anything related to the cabbage is really good. Brussels sprouts, kale, and collard greens. All of these vegetables that I'm naming are cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables help lower estradiol levels, which in turn causes a bump in testosterone. So it's like a balancing act right there. Not to mention, they're all very high in antioxidants, fiber, and water content. So they're going to do your body well, and they're going to do it justice, and they're going to help you maintain muscle mass. So eat those on a regular basis. Here's one of my secret smoking guns. I just got these at the grocery store today. I don't want to spill it. I'll get it close to the camera. Hopefully you can see that. You see it? You see me? You see? Now you don't. Now you do. Pickled herring, yes, in white wine. Don't get the one with cream because it's a little bit higher in calories and I don't know where it's been. Herring is actually a 
animal source of food that is high in creatine content. Now, all forms of animal protein are high in creatine, but herring is higher than pork, it's higher than beef, it's higher than chicken and turkey, and everything in between. So I would recommend getting yourself some pickled herring. This tastes delicious, I absolutely love it. And throw that into your salad. So if you made like a big honking salad with a lot of beautiful greens in it, which have a good alkalinity content, high in vitamins and minerals, and antioxidants, and then threw in like two hard boiled eggs and a big splotch of pickled herring and chopped all that up, you'd be good to go. And the only thing that can make that even better is this right here. See these? You know what they're called? Walnuts. You see the shape of the walnut? Look up, look closely. It looks like the brain. So, walnuts are good for brain health, but they're also a good source of omega-3 fats, and they're a good source of fiber, and they have a decent amount of protein for nuts. Nuts and seeds are not good sources of protein. Do not listen to the experts out there, these expert dietitians and nutritionists. Yeah, make sure to eat a lot of seeds and nuts because they're good sources of protein. Guess what? They're not. They're bad sources of protein. They're not even a complete protein. They've got a very small amount of protein in them. They're a good source of fat. Just look at the macronutrient profile of a food and you'll know the difference if it's a good source of protein or fat or carbs by seeing how many grams there are in there. These have probably 16 grams of fat per quarter cup and maybe four grams of protein and two grams of fiber. You tell me, you do the math. That being said, eat them anyway because they're a good source of omega-3 fats. So build your salad, have your hard boiled eggs, have your herring, put some nuts in there, chop them up, and you're gonna be off to the races. Another thing I love, a non-animal based source of food that's good for building muscle and maintaining it, quinoa. Make sure to get organic. You can get white, you can get red, you can get multicolor, I don't really care. Make some of this, and here's, here's a smoking gun for you. Combine quinoa with scrambled eggs and salmon and some cruciferous vegetables in a stir-fried medley. Dude, I'm telling you, if you make that and eat it, you're gonna feel like Superman. Your muscles are gonna absorb that. Any, anytime I have it, I'm using myself as the study here, I feel like Superman minutes after I eat it and the next day too, and I crush my workout the next day. I love quinoa because it is a non-animal source of grain. It's technically a seed, but it's called a grain that has all the essential amino acids represented in it. So it's a complete protein. It's very adaptable to different things that you put in it, like amino acids and stuff. Speaking of which, hold on. Let me get my, oh, forgot something. I'm gonna shake it up for you. Coconut amino acids, liquid form. I put that on everything. I put it in salads, I put it on steamed vegetables, I put it on quinoa, and that dish that I just told you about, the scrambled eggs with the quinoa and the salmon and the vegetables all combined together, I drizzle that in there and I blend it all together and it makes this delicious dish. So I would suggest getting yourself some coconut amino acids because remember, protein is comprised of what? Amino acids. Really what you're after when you eat protein is the amino acids. You're not after the protein. Yeah, it might taste good. Steak might taste good and fish and all these different things. But if you break it down, it is the amino acids that are the most important thing. Here, you can get some additional amino acids in your diet by adding this. And the coconut one is fantastic. The regular amino acids, they're okay, but I like the coconut one. It has this little bit different flair to it. Now, lastly, I've got two smoking gun tricks I wanna to talk to you about that are not necessarily related to building and maintaining muscle over 40, but these are very beneficial for the body. Chestnuts is one, these are organic, and apricot kernels, also organic. There have been studies done on apricot kernels. If you eat three a day, three, that's right, and they're very small. See how big they are? See that? That is one kernel. You don't wanna eat more than three of these a day because they can become toxic to the body. We have this term out on the streets where I spend a lot of my time called hormesis. Hormesis is when you expose your body to something that can give you a massive amount of benefits in a short duration, but if you do it for too long or too hard or too often, it can kill you. So biohacking is a big hormesis thing. If you expose your body to cold temperatures, if you roll around in the snow and do exercises sometimes, like I do, or if you jump into an ice bath, you can do it for so long, but if you do it for too long, it'll kill you. If you do it for a short amount of time, it's gonna boost your health through the roof. It's gonna boost your testosterone and all these different things. Apricot kernels are one of those things. If you eat too many of these, they could become toxic and they could really make you sick and possibly kill you. Yeah, I'm not even joking. So don't do it. Three a day. These have been studied to help reduce tumor size in people who have cancer. And that is one of the main reasons I eat them. And I just chop them up fine. They're super bitter too, I might add. I mean, you could tolerate them, but they're pretty bitter. Chop them up, put them in your salads, just eat them regularly with something else, a chaser behind it, and you're gonna be totally fine. Chestnuts have gallic and allegic acid in them, both of which have been known to help prevent 
and treat cancer as well. Yes, that is true. I've read studies on it. I'm just not shooting from the hip here. I will research these things that I eat and drink. So I would suggest throwing these into your diet just for the antioxidant benefits as well. Um, do I have any other closing statements here? I would suggest just be smart, eat clean, eat healthy, get some of these key foods in your diet that I talked about and go to the, work, go to the gym, do some beefcake workouts. And remember strength training, it doesn't matter if it's body weight or kettlebells or barbells or dumbbells or lifting rocks outside at your neighbor's house or chucking wood. As long as you're creating strain on your muscles, you will build muscle. As you age, I would suggest staying away from the 500 pound deadlifts and just focus more on functional ability so you can age gracefully outside and do all the things you love to do without a worry or a care in the world. Okay? Break! That was so much fun. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Make sure to like and share this video. Hit that little yellow tab to be notified every time we have a new video released. And make sure to share this to all your friends and family members, especially those over 40. Till next time, have a great day and good luck and happy eating.